If you're ready to take your gains to the next level, you gotta make sure you're not spending money on things you simply do not need. In this video, we're gonna go over four very popular fitness products that might sound good on paper, but ultimately the only paper you're gonna think about are the ones missing from your wallet. First, to preface, although like always, I try to support it with a bit of science, in the end, the things I, PictureFit, say in this video are just my opinions and thoughts about some popular fitness products. If you are happy using any of them, then by all means continue doing so. I simply want to provide you with a different but hopefully helpful perspective. That said, let's get started first with some things you can wear, and that is compression sleeves or garments. You've seen a bunch of people wear these at the gym all the time and even by your favorite professional athletes like Steph Curry. We're told that it's supposed to help in many ways, but notably with our training performance and recovery. But the unfortunate reality is that although these compression sleeves might make you feel like Steph Curry, it has as much of a chance of being beneficial as you have shooting like Steph Curry. When we look at the collective data, like how researchers did in a 2022 systematic review, the benefits are clearly lacking. Now a positive is that it does improve sensory motor sensations, giving a better feel and sense of your movements, which might explain its popularity in sports. However, if you're expecting an extra boost in your training, then I wouldn't get too excited. In multiple exercise-based performance measurements like 1 rep max, sprint speed, and time to exhaustion, the data shows that compressions don't do much at all. And unfortunately, a lot of the same is true for recovery. Now it's not all bad, compressions can increase local skin temperature, which hypothetically can improve blood flow, a key factor in muscle recovery but that's something we still need to wait and see. What we have seen though are quantified scales measuring people's perception of recovery, exertion, soreness, and fatigue, which largely showed no impactful differences outside of an ever so slightly improved perception of soreness. But overall, compressions are really not much more than just a fashion piece. But hey, let's be honest, at the gym, aesthetics are half the battle. The next item on the not so worth it list is the so-called smart weight scale. With today's fancy smart scales, not only can you figure out your body weight, you can also figure out your body fat percentage and muscle mass as long as you don't care that the numbers are completely wrong. To measure things like body fat, smart scales use a tech known as bioelectric impedance analysis. It might sound fancy, but BIA is arguably one of the least accurate ways to measure body composition, partly because it can easily be influenced by a whole host of factors like time of measurement, time of last meal, excessive sweating, subtle movements, genuine enjoyment of eating kale, which might also indicate broken taste buds. Unless your BIA device looks more like something professional researchers use, a smart scale with some dingy little sensors won't be much better than just taking a wild guess while looking at the mirror. Now in fairness, some smart scales do have other features like progression tracking, which is great if you want that, but you can also use one of the many fitness apps out there. In short, keep things simple, stick with the cheaper, dumb scales and let it do what it's good at, well kind of good at, and that is measure body weight and body weight only. And let's be real, smart or not smart, it's just gonna collect dust in the corner of your bathroom anyway. The third and not so useful fitness product is massage guns. Wait, let me be more specific, luxury massage guns. Now, no doubt using a massage gun after a tough workout can feel pretty darn good, but feeling good is just about all the massage gun can really do. Maybe very slight improvements in range of motion and muscle soreness, but that's about all we see in the scientific literature. I've got a video all about the science if you want to check that out later. So when talking about luxurious or premium massage guns, which supposedly offers enhanced benefits, what use is that really when you're enhancing benefits that don't exist in the first place? And don't be fooled by the marketing of different mechanics like percussion versus vibration, both have been researched and largely do not show much difference. Essentially, all this means is that, outside of maybe some fancy lights and colors, premium massage guns are functionally no better than others. Again, save your money and get a generic but well-reviewed massage gun for a fraction of the price or just skip it completely and settle for a simple foam roller and some tennis balls. But if you want to go Gucci and have the money to spend, I can't stop you. And the final item, which may surprise some of you, is actually a whole category of items, and that is fitness supplements. This might sound strange coming from someone that constantly shouts the importance of protein intake, which can undoubtedly be met with protein supplements. 
But that will never escape the fact that supplements are just that. Supplements, things used to fill in the gaps in your nutrition. The problem, however, is identifying what the gap is in the first place. Truth is, people really underestimate our body's ability to adapt and progress with just the basics, like exercising consistently, lifting heavy, and eating a generally good diet. And if you're already looking at supplements with just a few months into your training, then the problem is a lot less about filling in gaps, but more so about being consistent and being patient, things that fitness supplements cannot help you improve. And the biggest issue is that, outside of the few that are well supported, like protein, creatine, and caffeine, the far majority of supplements on the market are just scientifically unsupported junk. A tale as old as time is that every couple of years, some brand new best ever supplement makes a huge splash and then quickly fades away once people realize how badly they were ripped off. Also, what's becoming clearer and clearer is that the benefits of tried and true supplements aren't as exciting as many think it is, and sometimes limited to very specific contexts that won't benefit everybody. Creatine, for example, an extremely well-studied and supported fitness supplement, actually has a fairly high percentage of non-responders, which means it does pretty much nothing for about 20 to 30 percent of people. Caffeine also has wildly varying individual effects, and people often consume way, way more than they need. And of course, protein supplements. Even being one of the most scientifically backed supplements ever, the amount of protein you actually need is likely much less than you think it is. Thing is, going above a certain point, usually anywhere higher than 1.6 to 2 grams per kilogram of body weight per day, protein provides essentially no added benefit. Even then, due to diminishing returns, the data shows that the amount of gains you get from 1.6 grams per kilogram is not all that much greater than what you get from 1 to 1.3 grams, which is about 80 to 100 grams of daily protein for the average adult male. And even then, the small additional benefits that you might see with 1.6 grams are mostly observed in people with more advanced training experience. Beginners and intermediates probably will see the same gains with 1 to 1.3 grams of protein as they would with 1.6. So, outside of being very advanced, being an athlete that needs every ounce of improvement possible, or if you have very clear deficiencies, the gap you need to fill in your nutrition is a lot smaller than you think. Skip the supplements until you can actually take advantage of them. That said, you still gotta get your protein, just be smart about it. Now I'm gonna quickly wrap this up before the supplement industry knocks down my door to kick my photoshop booty. If you have thoughts, comments, agreements, disagreements, anything, you know where to leave them. Other than that, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a pricey thumbs up and share it with your supplement loving friends. Subscribe for more and check out my video on protein intake if you need more help. As always, thank you for watching and don't forget to thoughtfully get your protein.